The story of how Len Lai Collection and Archive ended up being here at Gavette Brewster is, is a terrific story of vision and response where you have uh, a number of people wanting to at last have Len Lai's work seen in New Zealand and it was Gavette Brewster who really responded to that and presented his entire work here in 1977 and it was John Matthews who worked, his young engineer at the time, picked up um, the invitation to work with Len Lai to realise these sculptures, particularly Fountain and Trilogy, to the scale that Len Lai had wanted. Uh, Len Lai was extremely happy with that. He called the Gavette Bruce uh, the swingiest gallery in the Antipodes and as a result of that set up um, the Len Lai Foundation, bequested his entire collection and archive uh, to the Foundation to be cared for by Gavette Brewster in its entirety. Now can you let go? And now no. slide this to left. And a wee back to the wee back towards the window. Four left. One, two, three. Oh, beautiful. Well, I had the privilege of working with him as his assistant in the last year of his life. And he was incredible, like he was 78, going on about 28. He was still buzzing with ideas. Every day was an adventure and he was working on new things right up to the very last moment of his life. I think Len Lai is, a, is one person I've known who absolutely unmistakably I would call a genius. He was an absolute ideas man. Everything he touched, he would have his own new way of doing it. Talk about a lateral thinker, Talking, talk about a creative guy. He was, he was amazing in so many fields. Until you're in the mood, because unless you can... It's unusual for someone born in New Zealand to develop an international reputation in one area, but Len was somebody who did it in several, amazing. He was a pioneer of kinetic sculpture, known in many countries. Um, he has an international reputation as a, a, a filmmaker who was the inventor of the direct film method. He was also a very, very accomplished writer. He did innovative work in photography and painting and many other fields. There are 18,000 items in the Len Lai Collection and Archive and many of those works are uh, in a great variety of media. Uh, there will always be a significant and memorable experience of Len Lai available in the Len Lai Centre that will always include kinetics and always include film. And something that's very important is the way that the building has been designed but also the intentions of the Len Lai Foundation is to have large works, works that even aren't realised at this moment in time, to be realised in preparation for permanent display at the Len Lai Centre. An art gallery is, is a fantastic thing to, to have. We've never done one before and it's a huge, it's a huge honour to do an art gallery. But to do one for Len Lai is, is, is just a, an, an amazing dream for us because Len Lai is New Zealand's main, main figure going into the next uh, century. I believe the Len Lai Centre is going to be a very significant drawcard for tourists, both within New Zealand and from without. Uh, what you're going to have, in my view, is a stunning addition to the Gavette Brewster. The work is cutting edge, it's interesting, it's exciting. Uh, so the building itself would be a tourist attraction, but what's inside it, it is going to be very significant. The building is, is about light, it's not about um, the material per se or, or anything else, it's about refracting and reflecting light, bouncing light around to create um, movement in light, movement that changes at the time of the day, that ref reflects images in and out of the building to the footpath back into the building. So it's all about um, a, 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 an object like a chandelier that reflects light in a, in a myriad of different ways to provide a kind of Len Lai's home, Len Lai's house if you like. Certainly interest in Len Lai is, is growing rapidly over time. There's 50,000 people in New Plymouth. We had 90,000 visitors to Gavette Brewster last year. And one in three people that come to the gallery are searching for Len Lai. Everywhere we've taken Len Lai's work, whether it's here in New Plymouth or in Auckland, Melbourne or Birmingham, people have really been able to connect to Lai's work on various levels. Part of why people, I think, 
can connect to Lai's work is that it's fun, it's full of energy, it is, and it energizes you as a, a spectator. And ultimately, what he wanted to do was create creative people. The world's a very big place, and only one or two artists are, are known everywhere to everybody. But Len was known and respected by artists all over the world. And everywhere you go, there is interest in Len Lai, sometimes as a filmmaker, sometimes as a kinetic sculptor, and sometimes just as a, a wonderful ideas man. A bit of stainless. And if this was around upside down, and you get that kind of an effect. Len Lai was very future projected. He, he, he knew that his work was going to be for the 21st century. But at the same time, I think he would have been very, very surprised and humbled um, by what has happened to the Len Lai collection over time and that his star has risen in the 30 odd years since his death. He is six foot high and uh, they go through this uh, arrangement here which I call the universe. I think it's something that he constantly delights, he constantly charms, he constantly seduces, he constantly surprises. And I think it's, it's that ability to be so contemporary and so of the moment. And yet this work in some cases was devised in the 1930s. I think that it'll only be when the Len Lai Centre is up and running that people will appreciate the, the depth and the, the breadth of the Len Lai collection and Len Lai as an artist. In fact, what we're looking at is this space to be truly a laboratory uh, of exploration, looking at innovation, energy, technology, uh, and, and making it a space for other artists to respond, for students, uh, to people to be inspired. The government administers what's called the Regional Museums Fund. Uh, that is a fund which can be made available to museums and art galleries that contain a nationally significant collection. Uh, in the case of this gallery, I'd go further and say it's an internationally significant collection. It was very clear that the 10 million needed to create the Len Lai Centre in terms of its construction needed to be raised from sources outside the New Plymouth District Council. And as a result of that, we've embarked upon a very uh, robust program of foundation support, private support and government support, TSB Community Trusts, the Ministry of Culture and Heritage, Lottery Grants Board and Todd Energy have always all given extremely generously to this project. Len Lai talked about the one fine day when his home would open to the public. His work, his ideas, his inspiration have been the cornerstone of creativity for so many people for so many decades. And this really will be a vision fulfilled when the doors open.